bringing judgment upon them. That's not the anointing we have in the New Testament. David, David, a man after my own heart, and Samuel poured the oil of anointing upon him, and the Spirit of God came on him in chapter 16, chapter 17. The anointing began to work, and he slew Goliath, and all those Philistines, the Israelites ran after them, and conquered them, and destroyed them. That's not the anointing we have in the New Testament. The anointing of the New Testament is going into all the world and preach the good news, the glad tidings, the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And so you are not, you know, going back to the old time, old time anointing, anointing. Here is Elijah now. Elijah was sitting there by the rock, and a king had sent for him. And the king said, Get that man for me. And he knew why. And so Elijah, Elijah stood there and he said, Man of God, come down. The king wants to see you. Uh, if I be a man of God, let fire come down, consume you, captain, and defeat him. And the fire came down and consumed them. The anointing I have is not like that. Because I came not to destroy, but to save. And now he gives us that mandate. He gives us that great commission. And he says, don't call fire down. Uh, that, that's what the, the, those two apostles, James and John, that, that's what they were looking at. The Samaritans will not receive you. Lord, do you permit us to call down fire from heaven? Burn them up like Elijah did. No, I didn't. I'm not giving you Elijah's anointing. I'm giving you the new Testament anointing. Testament means covenant. The new covenant anointing. And that new covenant anointing, New Testament anointing, is to make us reap the harvest of the world for Christ. I pray you understand. Uh, because I hear many people, sometimes we make mistakes in our singing. Sometimes mistake in our preaching. Sometimes mistake in our interpretation of a word in the Bible. The days of Elijah, they are here. Make me another Elijah today. Well, if you understand, they are another Elijah of the new covenant time, of the new testament time. That's good. But you are thinking of Elijah of that time. And what he did, and how he brought fire on this, and brought this one down. If you are thinking of that, that is wrong. But New Testament anointing. For me. New Testament anointing for the ministers and for everyone in Jesus' name. Now, which in Jerusalem? Let that power come upon you. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And they waited, and they all waited in the, in the upper room. And the day of Pentecost suddenly came. And then there was a sound from heaven. And a wind that blew in the whole building, in the whole house. And then tongues of fire came on each of them. And the people gathered. And as the people gathered, uh, you know, Peter rose up and began and began to talk to them. If you think these people are drunk, number one, the anointing gave a spontaneous message. He didn't, have, he didn't know they were coming. He didn't know what would happen. And as they all gathered spontaneously, he opened his mouth. That's the anointing. Open your mouth wide and heaven will fill your mouth with the appropriate message. Amen. And so he pointed out, you kill, you destroy, 
Jesus Christ is the Son of God and is our Savior. And then he quoted one or two verses of Scripture. We don't have to quote how you know, many, but 40 verses of Scripture. Sometimes I do that if I'm teaching, but we don't have to do that. And then he concluded by saying, You are the guilty of this. And the people said, men and brethren, what shall we do? That's the anointing. Brought conviction on them. And then Peter replied, repent. And be filled, baptized for the Holy Ghost. And repent and be baptized in water. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you now. We know that because we've read it over and over, but Peter never thought of that. That word, for the gift is unto you, came spontaneously. That's the anointing. And then uh, he told them, save yourself from this unto a generation. And 3,000 people believed. They repented. They believe that is the anointing at work. And they were told, all those people that believe, they need to be running after them, running after them. They were running after the apostles, and they were in fellowship. Fellowship was the word, and fellowship in prayer. And great signs and wonders were done by the apostles. That the anointing of the New Testament. That's the anointing we're receiving. That's the anointing we're going to manifest. That's the anointing we carry. And everywhere we carry that anointing, it will work in Jesus' name. Now, what kind of work will that do for the New Testament anointing that comes upon us? Again, I'm going to use that word, transform. Because we've seen in the ministry of David, transform. We'll see the ministry of Elisha transform. Here we are now in the ministry of the apostles, the ministry of the New Testament ministers transform. What were they to do? Team. Teach the word to convert sinners to the Lord. Teach the word to, confer, to, com uh, to convert sinners to the Lord. The last word that Jesus gave his own disciples. Look at Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18. It says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me, in heaven and on earth. Then, what's the next word there? Tell me, what's the next word there? Go ye. I know that, you know, many people as I was uh, growing as a Christian, I heard, go ye. And I, I felt I must rise up now and go. But understand, this is the last chapter of Matthew. Go ye. That starts with G. Now I learn that to get to G, I start with A. I come to B. I come to C. I come to D. I come to E. I come to F. And now I come to G. Go E. A. Abandon. Abandon your past life. Peter. You've caught all that. You will catch men. Now, leave what you have and you abandoned everything. You must write your aim. And your aim must be clear and distinct. You abandon your sin. You abandon the past. And now, don't, don't, don't go yet. Abandon and accept the Lord as your personal savior, be, is to believe. Believe on him. You know, we cannot just go, 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 go. We believe. And as you believe, 
something new happens in your life it says repent ye abandon the sin and believe the gospel and then it says see come unto me O ye that labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest what if these people did not count a to abandon b to believe c to come if you don't come you cannot go you come to christ first you come with all your heart all your soul and all your mind and you abandon surrender everything unto the lord and believe in a very definite way in a peculiar way this is the only savior of the world and i believe in him in a way i don't believe in any other person you come wholeheartedly unto him and then whatsoever he says unto you do it you do you do you do did he say to repent you do did he say to remain and abide with him do do you take him as the bridegroom of the bride? Do you take this man as the only man? You're getting married to him and you abandon allegiance to every other man on earth. I do. And that's how we take Jesus. Now I do. He is my savior. He is my Lord. He is my all in all. Do. Then you can follow follow me follow me what will this man do that's none of your business what if i will that he continues until i come don't bother about that you follow me it's the people that are taking those steps it's not talking to them talking to peter talking to john talking to all those apostles you abandon you believe you come you do you follow now you can come to G. Now you can go. Go ye. And as you go, what do you do? He spelled each out for them. As to what you do. Because now he says, after I have said all power is given unto him on earth and in heaven. He now says, go ye therefore and teach. Go ye therefore and teach. Don't dabble into current affairs. Current affairs is good when you're talking outside to your neighbors, you know, the politics, you know, the civics, you know what is going on. Talk about that. But when you go, as I told you to go, you will teach, teach, teach the basics of the gospel. What the basic? We are all sinners. What the basic? We cannot save ourselves. What the basic? only christ can save what the basic everyone who calls upon him and believes in him will be saved he says go teach them that after teaching them those basics and they believe baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy ghost and then he said lo i am with you to the end of the world there's another teach another teach and uh, that's uh, and the next verse there verse 20 it says after that you are not discipling them you are not teaching them all things whatsoever i have commanded you it says you know at this time it's risen from the dead it's no more in the grave and as it comes to this side of the resurrection it says you teach them all things whatsoever i have commanded you and you know there are preachers they tell themselves they don't tell me because i will not listen to them they say um, all that jesus taught matthew mark luke and john they said everything is gone they say all we need to listen to now read the epistles about us uh -uh. read the epistles romans and corinthians and galatians and ephesians and and the you know philippians colossians read that one i but what jesus said he said you know that one that one is gone why is it gone when jesus said teaching them to observe 
all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And then he says, on that basis, I'll be with you till the end of the world. He'll be with us. I said, he'll be with us. She in that word transformer is to teach them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Now we come to R in the word transform. Restore dead backsliding saints, church goers, to life. Or restore them back to life. Jesus himself, himself started with uh, Peter. He said, Peter, Satan has desired to have you, to sift you like wheat. Then he said, I'm praying for you. But Peter said, do I need prayer? I'm okay. I'm all right. That's what they think. They think they are strong by themselves. They think I've been following Christ all these three years. Do I need prayer, personal prayer? Do I need prayer, the priestly prayer of Christ? Do I need prayer, the prophetic prayer of the Lord that comes upon your life? It says, I will follow you anywhere. But Jesus overlooked that and said, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Because it was to backslide. The Lord saw that. The Lord did not make him backslide, but the Lord saw it. And then he says, when you're restored, you strengthen your brethren. You know how many people go on preaching, pushing, prophesying, going here and there, and yet they know in their hearts they are backsliding. Oh, but you say, we see manifestation in their lives. Yes, look at all these fans here, rolling and rolling. If we switch off the light, the fan will still keep on turning without that light because of the momentum it had gathered. All the time, electricity was there. There are people like that, they're backsliding, they are gone, and yet they continue activity, activity. And Jesus said, the time comes, you're restored. And then after that, after that restoration, you're strengthening your brethren. And they were told in James, James chapter 5, reading from verse 19, brethren, if any of you do hear, brethren, if any of you, brother, sister, do hear, brethren, if any of you, followers of Christ, do hear, brethren, if any of you that had been saved, by the grace of God. But if he hears from the truth. And one convert him. It was a brother. It was a sister. He heard from the truth. He came. He has now put his trust. His faith. His allegiance. Unto another Lord. He is now submitting his life. Unto another Lord. And you see him. The ministry of the anointing. In our lives. It to see that man and restore him. It's not just you, you know, shouting, singing, and waving, and all that. No, the anointing comes to transform. The anointing comes to teach. The anointing comes to restore that backsliding brother, that backsliding sister. I think, you know, there are people in the church and they've taken brother as a title that's always there just like somebody is a man is a man whether it's lying down or standing up or swimming in the sea or getting into the well or is whatever is still a man many people have taken the title brother like that sister like that sister so and so you see that that fellow has gone back it's no more following Christ. It's no more living the life he ought to live as a believer. But they keep on saying, brother, brother. Now, it's not a title that has just ticked on you. 
just because you got you raised up your hand one day over there but you continue in the lord if you continue in my word then tell me are you my disciples indeed so if you see then one of the brethren heir from the truth and one convert him let him know that he that converted that sinner he calls him sinner now they call him that brother he was a brother they call him sister he was his sister but now converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death understand the bible shall save the soul of one of you one of the brethren that has gone back he needs restoration without that restoration that individual is dead dead to god and it's just like a dead sinner that never came to the lord i i see many many people preachers i've met them i've spoken to some of them their members are gone back into sin and they say they try to talk but they measure their words because they don't want to have the air the anger the wrath of that man they're careful in what they say and eventually because of the usefulness of that man in the church the usefulness of that man in their ministry they say well if it's lost that's in his hand if he dies in his sin that's in his hand but we need his tithe and offering uh that's selfish now you want to get his money even though he's throwing his soul into the sea that's selfish that's wicked he has talent he has gift i want to make use of his gift because without his gift my ministry will not prosper and so because i need his gift i see he's gone astray i see he's living in sin but he will settle himself with god let him give me the service the gift the expertise he has so that i will prosper i remember many years ago uh, that's the time the you know ibm machine was you know was uh, kind of holding sway everywhere and we had this uh, manual typewriter we were using in the office that time and this fellow brought this ibm machine not only that he sent his secretary to you know operate it for us anything we wanted to do and the man assured me that whatever you want he has the money he has you know whatever it takes and i should just tell him and it's done i said thank you i thought he was a brother just about that week or two after i heard that the man now abandoned the first wife and was living with the second woman and i called the secretary saying to us i'm hearing this about your master mm, he said pastor i won't tell you lie that is true i said carry this ibm machine carry it back to him <laughs> why do we need this ibm machine if the fellow is not living in the grace of god so the man got it and he came to me he said uh, uh, pastor as i heard you said we well, should they should return the ibm machine i you know i gave it uh, and I, and then he said you know pastor i had not taken this other woman when i sent that machine to you so the machine is clean I said, but if you continue like this, where will you spend eternity?
that the thing that should be important to the person that has the anointing. And I said, repent and make right your way. Do restitution. After you've done that, then we'll talk about machine. First, about your soul. When you know, when you see that somebody is gone astray, you don't just keep on using their gifts so that your own ministry will prosper, your own ministry will grow, and the people that are growing the ministry are going on their way to hell. Restore them. That's what the anointing does. God will help you. Amen. And God will keep on helping me. Amen. Say amen for me. Amen. Because you know for me, it's one thing to tell the stories of the past. To say, this is what I used to do. But the question is, do I do that now? Can I do that now? The ministry has expanded. We're here, we're there. And if there are people that are key to the success of the present day ministry, and I hear that they've gone astray, they're living in sin, and yet they're serving. What do I do? Do I consider the Bible? Or do I consider the growth of my ministry at the present day? The Lord wants us to remain, remain faithful until the very end that the people who walk with you, the people who serve and they serve in the gospel, no matter how close they are to you, if they are not living right, we shall have the boldness, the courage, the conviction to say, my friend, we don't want to deceive them. My brother, my brother, my brother, my friend. I hear this is up. I hear this is happening. Mm, yes, Pastor. But uh, you know, I'll, I'll make up. I'll make up. Uh, go and make up. Drop that thing, uh, Pastor. If I drop this area of service, the ministry will collapse. You are not the one that makes a ministry to collapse or not to collapse. There is a God in heaven that helps the calling and the ministry and the work he has committed into our hands. Never you think that you are so indispensable. You are living in sin and you are greater than God. That if you are not there, the ministry will collapse. That's blasphemy. God is here. Christ says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And he can do much more than you can do. So preachers, pastors, ministers, don't be afraid. Say the truth. Live the truth. Handle the word of God just like it is in the word. Get them restored and then they can move on i'm waiting for a good amen a awakening careless saints to liveliness awaking them many souls are sleeping and jesus came after their prayed the mount of gethsemane and he found Peter sleeping, James sleeping, John sleeping. And he said, ah, get up. Can you not pray with me? Wait with me. Intercede for me, with me. Just one hour. He went back again. He came back. They were still sleeping. The people, their souls are sleeping. Their heart, spirit are sleeping. Their personality, they're sleeping. And I'm not talking of those who have worked and worked and worked hard for the Lord during the night and they didn't sleep in good time. And now when they come to the meeting, the flesh is demanding from them, give me some attention and sleep. So we'll find them sleeping, not those people. Those are good, good people. They just have worked last night. But the people that no matter how many hours they sleep on Saturday night, they come to your church 
and they are sleeping and sleeping and it's only when you say in jesus name we pray and people shout then they wake up and they look at oh we're still in church wake them up and the people who are so asleep when temptation comes they don't recognize temptation anymore they just fall into that when an offer comes from the devil an offer comes from the world they don't recognize the difference between their offer that comes from the lord and the one that comes from the devil they just take everything awaken them the people who are here and there and because they've been busy here and there the souls they were to be watching over those souls are gone awaken they were told in ephesians chapter five uh, were told in first corinthians rather chapter 15 verse 34 awake to righteousness and sin not awake the righteousness and sin not in our earlier years in the christian life we knew that we we're very conscious of that we we're saved not to continue in sin we we're saved to be free from sin and to live a life above reproach but after so many years now of knowing the Lord, we find some of the believers showing what they were not sure at that time. Taking, you know it, what they were not take at that time. And we see some kinds of careless, careless relationship between men and women between so-called brothers and sisters so much liberty so much freedom between the men and the women and they call this now fellowship uh -uh. didn't you have fellowship in those earlier days before you came of course we did did you have fellowship in the new testament acts chapter 2 the people they had fellowship not the fellowship of the flesh but fellowship around the world. Fellowship around the name of the Lord is not fellowship of the works of the flesh. Not fellowship of, uh, you know, flesh touching flesh. Flesh embracing flesh. And then their lives, their lives is just like so, so, and so. It's, it's like the only thing they can claim, we didn't go into this. Don't wait for that. That is not the way we started. And if we're going to live the life that the Lord expects us to live, we're awake to righteousness and sin not. In the you know earlier years, I can tell for myself, I can tell for the few people that I knew. If we were looking for job, we don't we don't pay bribes to anyone. And I still remember that you know in our on our roads here, one of our brothers was driving. As was driving in. Uh, yeah, and the checkpoint they stopped him bring your particulars he brought out all the particulars they look through okay it's all right but um before you can pass this place you give us mention the amount and the fellow said no i don't do things like that because you know if they do it and they do it and they do it and we are all doing it and we come to job praying oh lord stamp out corruption from our nation we ourselves are part of the corruption how will god answer that kind of prayer so the man stayed there one hour went they called him man you would have gone to your destination now if you just give us this amount he said no i don't do that okay they made him sit in the sky again for another one hour two hours 
Then they called him again and said, ah, young man, what's your problem? He said, no problem. Why are you not giving what we have told you? Other people have passed and he gave what were asked there. Why are you just there? He said, because I'm a Christian. But they said, all those other people that passed and gave us, they are not Christians. I don't know about them. I know about myself. I am a Christian. So they said, which church do you go? What did they say? They said, they were like, oh. Then that policeman spoke to all the other police people. He said, this man is the palace. If you make him stay there for five hours, you'll not get one naira from him. So they said, you can go. I said, they said, that man carried the anointing with his action, with his refusal. Not to give the bribe he was preaching the gospel to them. And eventually they asked him of what church. And when he mentioned deeper, oh yes, we know that deeper life. They are not just deeper in doctrine, they are deeper in action. That's what the Lord wants us to demonstrate. Awake to righteousness and sin not then paul the apostle added for the corinthians for some have not the knowledge of god i pray we'll all have this knowledge and the anointing will work in every one of our lives in jesus name Amen. now we come to the next uh, letter here we're looking at and nourish the bride with the bread of life. Nourish the bride of Christ. In our churches, we have the bride of Christ. We have the people who have come out of the world and they are sold unto the Lord. And we're ministering to them every time. Your ministry should not weaken them. Your ministry should strengthen them. And your action, ministry, preaching, prayer, counseling, you take note that you're talking to the bride of Christ. And what to say to the bride you are responsible to the bridegroom. And so we're told in Ephesians chapter 5. It says in Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 5, it says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. Amen. Amen. I think we, we need to ask ourselves, you're a minister, you're a pastor, you're a leader in the church. Do you love the bride of Christ, the church, as Christ has loved you, has loved the church? And then husbands and wives. After all these many years that we've been preaching to husbands and wives, you think we don't need to do that again, but we still need to do that. Husbands, love your wives. It doesn't say compromise with your wife. Husbands, love your wives. It doesn't say change the word of God. Change your conviction. Because your wife says, I don't like this kind of conviction, this kind of consecration, this kind of surrender to the Lord, and this kind of absolute yieldedness unto the Lord. I don't like that one. If you love me, you must compromise and you must water down the word of Christ. No, madam, because we met Christ before you came in. And we committed our lives to Christ before you came in. And we gave him total, total allegiance, absolute surrender before you came in. Yes, the husband will love the wife, but not to the point 
of disobeying Christ. Well, we're not disobeying Christ. But then he said, he gave himself for you. That he might claim some water by the word, the water of the word. And so that you have a church without spot, without trinkle, or any such thing. I pray we will so prepare the church for the coming of the Lord. That when the Lord will come, they will find the church the way the church ought to be in Jesus' name. Now we go to the next letter here. We are coming to... What's the next letter here now? Sorry? F. F. We have done N. Now S. Sanctify. Sanctify. Uh, we will so help the church that the church becomes sanctified. And lives in sanctification. Whatever your definition of sanctification is, does not matter. Let's go back to the Bible. What's the meaning of sanctification in the Bible? To make holy. Not just to assume holy. Not just to reckon holy. God does not reckon holy. What really in a practical way is not holy. It's not I claim it. I have it. No, this one, we have to go on our knees and consecrate and totally submit and surrender ourselves to Christ and understand what the blood of the Lamb can do, can produce an Enoch that walks with God 300 years without blemish, without spot, and without anything to disqualify him in the sight of the Lord. It's by grace, yes, and it's for godliness. Sanctification by grace, yes, is for godliness. And when God does that in our lives and is able to maintain what he has done, that is sanctification, and we help the church uh, to have what Christ will be looking for when he comes. Jesus said, shall I find faith on the earth when I come? He's coming again. And what will he find in our lives? What will he find in the lives of the people we're ministering to? Let's help the church and stabilize them in the experience that Christ died for. Now we can go to F. F is uh, to focus on true fellowship in the Lord. True fellowship in the Lord. The Lord is the light of the world. Jesus, the light of the world. Whatever fellowship you have that cannot see the light of day, that's not true fellowship. Whatever fellowship you have, with that man, not your husband. A man in your church, a man outside your church. What a fellowship you have with him that cannot see the light of day. That's not true fellowship. Whatever fellowship you have with a man that if your husband were there, you wouldn't do that. That's not fellowship in the light and in the Lord. Whatever fellowship we have must be fellowship in the light. Give me a good amen. amen. And whatever you're doing with a man, with a wife, with a woman, no matter who that man is, no matter how useful that man is. You see, there are people that think, this man is serving us well just to make him happy how to have this kind of fellowship with him just to make him happy and if your husband saw that kind of fellowship your husband would say what this is what you're doing was well, somebody serving us that's not fellowship that one is sin that one is evil what a fellowship the pastor you know we who are pastors in 
my own personal ministry, for my own protection. We, uh, I have the counseling room, and then there's a glass door, glass all through, so that the security man standing there outside the counseling room can see everything that is happening in the counseling room. If I stand, he can see. If I wave, he can see. We have that glass so that the life of the pastor is not a hidden life. So that the people out there can see inside there. In fact, everywhere I go, not just today, from a long, long time ago, the whatever we call them security or whatever they are always with me if i'm you know in the plane there's somebody always there with me, apart from my wife and if i'm in the house anywhere they are all there with me and even if somebody came to say uh, pastor so and so did this with me I don't have to answer the people who are with me every time they will give the answer do you so protect yourself like that apostle apostle goes into you know a room he wants to do deliverance apostle goes into you know a chamber he wants to do deliverance and locks the door nobody there and then the lady is there and the lady is telling stories rolling eyes and everything well you say she has a demon yes i accept even her action even her invitation even her methodology methodology like delilah you can tell this one has tell me now <laughs> and so eventually apostle soils his life destroys his life and the anointing of something is not able to deliver him from Delilah now he loses his sight that's not the first thing he lost his sense he lost the spirit he lost even the scriptures now he lost his very ministry he took out his eyes and you know there are some things we lose we can get back there are some things we lose we cannot get back something you not get back those eyes the spirit came back the power came back the forgiveness was there there are some things forgiveness will not bring back he lost those eyes forever we want to be wise that the anointing we have we go out not to destroy ourselves what's my game i'm casting out a devil from one woman one madam one lady and then a greater demon comes on the person that is casting out devil god forbid god forbid it will not happen in our lives in jesus name but fellowship fellowship true fellowship is that which we have we have seen this first john chapter one and i'm reading from verse three here that which we have seen and that which that's what we declare unto you that she also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and with his son jesus christ it says in verse six it says if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness we do we lie and we do not the truth but verse seven if we walk in the light as he is 
in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. Amen. Amen. And as they deserve the Lord to make us clean and remain clean from all sin. Now we come to the next letter. That's O. That's occupy a soul winning with leaders and the laity. That is, we so teach our leaders, our ministers, our pastors, our workers, that as Christ has said, we all occupy until he comes and the laity that means the people the members of the church we also instruct them we inspire them we guide them and lead them to really evangelize to carry out what jesus had said in luke chapter 19 verse 10 it says for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And after that, he said in verse 13, he said, therefore, is, verse 12, a certain noble man went into a far country, like Christ now has gone into the far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to come. Jesus to return and Jesus is coming returning again in Jesus name and he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them what did he say and said unto them what did he say what did he say to you? S say that again. I see he come. He's still to come. Are you occupying now? Yes, in theory. Or yes, in practice. You know, there are people that they, and these people, they read the Bible. These people who come to ask me and talk to me, they, you know, if I ask them, they can even quote it from, you know, from memory. What's Luke chapter 19, verse 13? Oh, they said, occupy till I come. But they are coming to ask me a question. They say, Pastor, when are you going to retire? I said, Remind me again, Luke chapter 19, verse 13. Remind me there. Then ask me the next question. When are you going to retire? Do you see contradiction there? They know. The Lord has said, Occupy till I come. And now they are asking, When are you going to throw the words of Jesus aside? When are you going to take on the principles of the world? There, they retire. And then you bring that to the man, to the woman, to the church, that God that said, occupy till I come. And you want the words of Christ to be put down. And the practice of the world to be lifted up. We're going to occupy until he comes. Amen. You will occupy until he comes. Amen. And I will keep on doing it until, you know, it's a great privilege, you and I, that the Lord will say I should take his word and take it to the people that need to hear. That's what he did on the cross of Calvary. That he 
will not be here to be telling them directly and then he points to me and he points to you and he says go tell them he has angels myriads of angels in heaven he could have sent them it, well he sent angels before he sent angels to Sodom and Gomorrah he sent angels to Abraham he sent angels to the mother of Samson he sent angels to people in the Old Testament but now he says that era is gone that we are now to preach the gospel with the anointing and he has given us the anointing and we're going to do it something that angels not that they will not do they will do it if god told them to do it but that they cannot do it he says to you to me occupy till i come we will do it in jesus name our is to revive righteousness and holiness as lifestyle revive righteousness holiness as lifestyle and that's what the lord has called the church to do that the world will know that the church is different from the world it tells us in luke chapter 1 verse 74 it says that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear and it says in verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life and that's what we have to revive in the church I know that good music is coming into the church and worship coming into very good wonderful but the music as good as it is will not ordinarily take people to heaven if they do not have that grace that purifies that cleanses that makes us holy I know that many other good things are coming. This one, this one, that one. They're good. And we need them and we'll use them. But those things will not take people to heaven ordinarily without the preaching of the true gospel, the full gospel, the life transforming gospel. And so we preachers, if we abdicate a position, a calling and we abandon what we're to do and we say praise the lord that something will do it that thing there will do it and of course my singers my choir my band will take the church on they'll feel thank god we came to church today we don't even need the preacher the pastor now if they feel like that we're wasting life in ministry. We are to revive righteousness and holiness as lifestyle. Not just, you know, today I happen to, you know, the dead clock is right twice a day. Look at that clock. It's dead. The battery is gone. The power is gone. And then you look at the wristwatch that is still working uh, and you see it's 630. And then you look at the dead clock. It's 632. That clock is right once in the evening and once in the morning. But it's dead. There are people that have holiness like that. It just so happens that once or twice a day they say the right thing they do as a right thing no but the righteousness that is lived as a lifestyle the righteousness the holiness that we have as a lifestyle let us rise up as ministers and revive that and the lord will bless your ministry the lord will equip you 
the anointing will do the right thing in your life in Jesus' name. Transform, transform. What's T? T. R. A. N. S. F. O. R. M move mountains with the mountain moving anointing from the Lord. There are mountains there. Don't be moved by the mountain. Many of us are moved by the mountain. Here I am. I preach. I've consecrated. I've given all. And then I come out and I see a mountain, whatever it is that tries to stop you, that tries to delay you, that tries to take your attention. And here we are. Look at the mountain. I would have gone and manifested the anointing. I would have gone and I will demonstrate the anointing. But look at the mountain. Paul the apostle said, none of these things moved me. The things I see. The things I hear, the things I feel, it says none of these things move me. Neither count I my life so dear, so precious, so indispensable unto me, but that I might finish the calling, the work that the Lord has given me to do in preaching the gospel of the grace of God. Move those mountains. Don't be moved by the mountain. If you didn't care of any mountain, of any jesting, of any gesture, if you didn't care of any criticism, if you didn't care for any anything that anyone will say or do, you wouldn't have stopped you jump up over that hurdle and you'll move on. Amen. I said you'll move on. Amen. We started by the grace of God Deep Alive, 1973 August. And from that very beginning, I had contrary voice, the people that said, don't do the Bible study like that. Just, you know, uh, just sit around and then you see it in the circle to you so that they don't know who is teaching, who is not teaching. And they said, I should do conversational thing. I asked, you know, we'll read this. What do you think? What do you think? And then I give my own. They said, I should give my own opinion. And they said, I should not be the final voice. Because then, if I'm the final voice every time, they will think I am the leader. Let another person, a lady in there, a man there, whatever he says, Let's take that from the Lord. No, that's what they told me. And I said, thank you, sir. But I'm not going to do that. What the Lord I called me to is to stand like Peter. Not in the same circle with all those Pharisees. And what do you think? What do you say? No. And I continued this way. 1974 came. 75 came. 1980 came. 81, 85. All those years have come and gone. Now this is 2024. And I keep saying the same thing. The word of God that will make sinners to shake and to tremble and to be convicted and to rush to Calvary and to say, Lord, I know I am a sinner. I need forgiveness. I need salvation. And by the grace of God, I've continued like that. You will continue in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, I, I've been in places that, you know, somebody will call me after that meeting and say, oh, well, thank God for what you said. But, you know, uh, you are confrontational. You are too direct. You mention, and you even point at people, and that 
poor fellow there, I'm sick, you are pointing to him. You say, you adulterous, if you don't repent, you will go to hell. They say, come, 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 don't talk like that. Um, control yourself. If you cannot uh, do without pointing your hand, put your hand in your pocket. <laughs> and then just say, God loves everybody. Don't say God is angry with the sinner every day. Well, I used to say that. Do I still say that? Yeah. Of course, that's the word of God. It's not my opinion that will save people. It's the word of God that will save people. And I've, uh, I'm not retiring, but I'm calling you before I retire. Come, stay by my side. What the Lord has done all these more than 50 years, if you do the same thing, and if you go to every community, I can tell you the places I have gone in River State, and the places I've gone in all the states of Nigeria, and the work, the preaching, the traveling did not make me weak. Am I weak? Are you looking at a weak person? In mind, I'm so strong. In spirit, I'm so strong. In body, I'm still strong. I just want to pass to you everything God has done in my life. United together, we can take this country for the Lord. Yeah. United together, we can take this continent for the Lord. United together, we can go beyond where we have been, and we can bring millions of souls that have not heard, we can bring them to here. Yeah. It's now your turn. Yeah. I said it's now your turn. Yeah. You have the anointing. Yeah. You've got the anointing. But don't just keep it in your little chamber, in the house, in the conference here. Go out. Manifest that anointing. Teach them. Relieve them. Resolve their problems. Help them. And help them to come to know there is nothing they need in life that Christ cannot provide. Let's rise up now and say, Lord, this anointing I have got. I will manifest, use, explore, do it. For the name of the Lord's sake, open your mouth, open your mouth. Don't carry on like, you know, you have always done. Don't leave here and go back to the old, old style, old life. New Testament anointing. Gives you the courage, the boldness. A fiery disposition. To live. To minister. To teach. Like he wants you to teach. Teach the sinners that Jesus is Savior, only Savior, mighty Savior, great Savior. That shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save. His people 
from their sins. Teach them. Teach them until they are converted. Convicted, converted, consecrated to the Lord. Restore the dead backsliders. Don't just carry on. Brother, sister, brother, sister. They're living in sin, brother, sister. They're as bad, as, as evil, as sinful as the world, brother, sister. No. Stop deceiving the members of the church who are backsliding. You are taking gifts from them. Restore them. Restore them. That's what the anointing does. Awaken the careless souls. Careless in action. Careless in character. Careless in behavior. Careless in their interaction between men and women. Awaken them to righteousness. Nourish them. The saving word, the sanctifying word, the stab stabilizing word. Nourish them. Nourish the bride or the bread of life. Stabilize them, the saints in sanctification and love they're not shaking anymore they are not wondering what they believe or what they don't believe stabilize the saints in sanctification and love Focus on true fellowship. Not fleshly fellowship. Focus. On true fellowship. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness. We deceive ourselves and we do not the truth. Occupy in soul winning with the leadership and with the leadership. Revive righteousness and holiness in lifestyle. Not just once in a while, you take your stand. Lifestyle, character, from day to day, every moment, every time. Revive the consciousness, the passion, the desire for righteousness and holiness in lifestyle. Move 
the mountains. Don't allow the mountains to move you. There are people that might disobey you to your face. That's a mountain. Don't be moved by that. There are people that will reject the word. That's a mountain. Don't be moved by that. The people who mean to go to heaven will hear the word, accept the word, believe the word, consecrate to meet the demands of the Lord. And move on, move on, move on, in spite of mountains move on in jesus name we pray i said in jesus name we pray Say after me, Lord, I accept the word. Lord, I believe the word. Lord, I commit myself to the word. Lord, I will declare and do the word of the Lord. Lord, I enlist to continue carrying the gospel of Christ. Lord, I will follow without any deviation. Lord, from this day I go. Lord, from this day I go. With my heart, with my soul, with my mind, with all my resources, with everything I have, with everything I will have, with every partner I have, with every companion I have, I go. The Lord will go with you. His power will go with you. His grace will go with you. As you go, teach. As you go, restore. As you go, awaken. As you go, nourish the people. As you go, stabilize them in the Christian life. As you go, focus. Amen. Don't look this way, look that way, look this one, that way, focus. Amen. And the Lord will be with you. Amen. As you go, occupy. Amen. As you go, revive. Amen. As you go, move, 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 and keep on moving. Amen. The God of glory go with you. The Lord of power go with you. Amen. The spirit of the living God will be the energy within. You will not stop. Amen. Raise up those hands now, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We well, bless your name for the word you have spoken to us. Now we know. We understand the anointing, we experience the anointing, and now we're going to reap the end time, end time harvest with this anointing. I pray, Lord, your people will not disappoint you. Yeah. You will not be disappointed in your people. Yeah. That everyone will go forth in the strength and the might and the power of the Spirit of God. Yeah. This nation. Every local government, 
every village, every town, every city, this country, every region, every state, this nation, and all that nation will be brought on their knees before the Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, you are sending forth your army. A mighty army is going forth. No power will resist you. No power will be able to withstand you. No power will stop this evangelistic movement. Lord, use us any way, every way, anywhere, everywhere, until our last breath in Jesus' name. God in heaven will come like Hezekiah. You told him it's all over. Pack it up. Set your house in order. And Hezekiah said, Lord, I still have something to do for you here. I don't want to go now. And you sent Isaiah back to him and you gave him 15 years extra. Your people here, they've come this far and there's still much land to be conquered. Lord, in your love, in your mercy, your compassion, in your impartiality, give them more years to live and work. If you want to give any of us 15 extra years, Lord, I receive. Amen. Say, Lord, I receive. Long life Amen. without sickness. Amen. Long life Amen. without hindrance. Amen. Long life Amen. without anything stopping you on the road. You can go now Amen. in the strength of the Lord, Amen. in the power of the Lord, Amen. in the health that comes from heaven. Amen. Go labor. Amen. Go preach. Amen. Go occupy. Amen. He will meet you everywhere you go. Amen. He will show up. Amen. He will manifest his power. On you, Amen. on your ministry, Amen. in your church, Amen. in the evangelistic field. Amen. The time has now come. The keys in your hand. Amen. Open the doors for the sinners to come into the kingdom. Amen. It is done Amen. for me. For me. It is done Amen. in my ministry. It is done. Everywhere I go, you will see the manifestation and demonstration of the mighty power of God in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please put those hands together for the Lord. We can't be less grateful to God for what he has done. What a beautiful morning. Wonderful exposition of God's word to us. Our Father in the Lord has poured his heart out. We will not perform less. Amen. Please let's have our seat. I invite our South South Deep Life Overseers Chairman, Aibo 
wonderful servant of God, Pastor Andrew Sagie, he has a word for us, and we give the vote of thanks to our Father in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. A three worded sentence should be in all our mouths. We are grateful. Everybody say, We are grateful. Firstly, we are grateful to the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit who created us, gave us eternal life, and gave us ministry to pursue. Secondly, we are grateful to our Father in the Lord, the convener of GCK, the founder of the Pakistan Life Ministry and all the subsidiaries for his ever availability and preparedness in the hands of the Lord to impart lives. We are grateful to our mother in the Lord, who is always going along with our father, supporting and playing all the roles expected of her. We are grateful to Khan, to Church Growth Forum, to PFN, and the leadership for all the support they give. We are grateful to the government of River State that gave us this very place, Western, um, Western County uh, Secondary School. Here, yeah. they gave us free. We paid nothing. Free. We paid nothing. This song we are using also, they gave us freely. All the accommodation they gave us freely. We are grateful to the governor of this state, to the commissioner of education, for making all available to us. We are grateful to South South State Overseers, who are always in cooperation, going along with our general superintendent whenever he has program in South South. We are grateful to everyone here. There can be no father without children. One is only a teacher if he has student to teach. If he has no student, you can't call him a teacher. One is only a parent. You call him, he's the father of this. If the person is barren, he cannot be called a father. If you were not here, the convener will not preach to the chair. So, we are grateful to you for coming. And we want to say, the Lord God Almighty, we come to bless you in Jesus' name. The anointing we have received, we carry it to everywhere by his grace. So that the will of God will be done, not only in our own lives, in the lives of all the people around us, in Jesus' name. The can uh, the chairman and the lieutenants, they said they have presentation to give to our general superintendent. That they have some personality they want to present, and they also have a gift to present. And now call on their representative to come forward and take over. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our daddy here, our father, we, we are grateful to you. To God for you. We love you. We don't want to have uh, the can comprising of many local government. We want to have cast a reflection on GCK. And by God's special grace, we we'll call the secretary of Kanahuda East to just come and make a small casting reflection on GCK. We we'll also have a little award to present to you. 
and our mommy. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. At this time, I request all the can officials across the LGS to please be on our feet as we honor our Father now. The can executives across all the LGS and the church leaders. The LGA chairman, please, you can come to the altar now. The senior ministers across the churches, you can be standing now as we honor our Father. I stand on the platform of the testimonies that have been shared here because of time. Oh, Daddy, I might not have time to share a personal testimony, but your life has affected me. Before I was born, I, I grew up here in you. Your ministry has been in existence. And today, I stand on this platform to say thank you because the little I am today is the impact of your ministry. The Lord will continue to bless you and increase you literally as you go global in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me do this, this presentation. Can reflection on GCK Ahoda 2024. We thank the Lord. We appreciate the Almighty God for the wonders of God's grace. Global Crusade with Grandpa Williams Fullaron Shaw Kumuyi with Alpha location from Ahoda River State. <laughs> Review of Ekpe Christianity. Grandpa, the Alpha location Ahoda for this crusade is a political and administrative headquarter of the